Oh, I got one right here. That's mine, too. Well, good evening. It's good to see everybody. If you would, let's grab a hymnal and turn to hymn number 138. Hymn 138 as we stand and sing, please. seated. Hymn number 142. Yeah.
Thank the Lord for this, another opportunity to be back in the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And uh, you've been out for a long time, uh, you sort of miss it, and you miss the congregating together, and it's good to get back. And I pray that we'll uh, be back in full swing before too long praying that after all this rioting and stuff is over I'm praying tell us now y'all get back in your houses <laughs> yeah I, I'm afraid I, I don't know folks you, I never know what's going to happen and uh, in this uh, this country of ours but uh, God knows and he's got it all under control praise the Lord now I want to apologize today I uh, had everybody to stand, and I had them turn around, and I said, shake hands. I forgot all about this distancing, and uh, and I know some uh, didn't want to shake hands. They told me, "You, uh, we can't shake hands. And I said, okay. <laughs> you, we, I'll not do that. I'll, I'll just have you go, turn around and wave. And uh, if you feel comfortable shaking hands, go ahead, but... But I do, I do understand we still need to be careful, and uh, I don't know. I don't know about this thing, honestly, folks, and uh, people still are catching it, and still peop some people are, they, they're telling me, are, are still uh, uh, leaving this old world. But So we do need, need to be careful, make sure you keep washing them hands. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, Brother George uh, leaving today. George Kelly, he, he's is it George Kelly. Yeah, he squeezed that sanitizer in my hand <laughs> while he was leaving, and hands was nobody else. <laughs> that stuff was just dripping from my hand. He said, "Hey, you need this," <laughs> and uh, I said, "Thank you, thank you very much." But anyway, I, I do uh, say that we need to be careful still, and and. Uh, uh, be careful with one another and and uh, maybe we just need to wave I don't know but anyhow God's good amen and uh, let's let's still remember our our folks that are not still able back to be back with us and I hope you're still watching uh, by the means of the internet and uh, that the services is a bit uh, is a blessing to you what would uh, what would people do without the internet right now you know, that's their church. Now, a lot of people uh, not able to get out can sit there and, and view the service over the Internet. And, of course, you got you some of you good TV preachers out there, too. You can still watch. Thing to you. Amen. So we do uh, miss uh, certain ones that are not able to be here. And um, we uh, hope they'll be back soon. Amen. And they'll see and... Uh, I hope they'll be able to get back before, before too long. Keep those in prayer that are sick tonight. Um, how about our Miss Jeanette? Have, is she about the same? About the same. You pray for Miss Jeanette. The Lord will uh, help her. And uh, Miss Dolores, and remember her. Uh, Miss Rose, pray for her. Uh, these dear ladies that uh, haven't been here for a while <laughs> and uh, are not able to be here. I meant, made, made uh, I wanted to mention Brother Gene, and sleep forgot it today, but it was good to have him back. And uh, Brother Gene's been going through uh, there with his health, and and uh, I'm so glad that uh, I went to see him the other day, and I walked in his apartment, and it was about 80 degrees in there. And I said, you got the air on? I said, oh, yeah, I got it on. It's 68. <laughs> well, his air conditioner wasn't working, and he wasn't reporting it. So I reported it, and Mr. Ring got on to him, and uh, they uh, gave him a new uh, air. Now he's, he's cooling down. He's got this uh, ailment with his uh, uh, nerves. And if you get hot and get bothered, they start bothering you. And that was really bothering the heat. And uh, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's hard to get old. And start, you know, <laughs> all the ailments and stuff. 
lumbago and all that stuff uh, happening to you. But pray for Brother G. Remember him in prayer, if you would, please. The Lord will bless him and help him. Keep Miss Lucy in prayer. We appreciate her uh, being here today. And uh, she's probably watching. We love her. Appreciate her coming. Pray for her, if you would, and that have uh, lost their loved ones in recent days. Well, they haven't lost them. They know where they're at. Mm -hmm. and uh, But you pray, for, remember them in prayer. Okay, I'll tell you what, men, come on, and we'll receive our offering tonight. And um, we'll give as the Lord leads, guides, and directs us tonight. This being the first Sunday, if you have a special dollar or two you'd like to give, or a five, ten, whatever, go buy the Joe Ash box and throw it in there, and that'll help on the building uh, fund. And uh, so uh, we want to see that going down keep going down amen and it will by with God's help God does it brother God does it he brings in the sufficient funds and we praise him for it let's pray father in Jesus name I thank you again Lord for this night thank you for the blessings of this day and Lord there's so many tonight that we're thinking about that are sick those who are at home not able to be here our shut-ins, we pray for them. And uh, we ask that you'd touch their bodies tonight, Lord. Help them to get back with us soon. And encourage here tonight, Lord. Thank you for those who've come out to be with us on this Sunday night. Bless this offering, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just the chorus. I've got a mansion just over the hillside. That bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yon will never more wander. But walk the streets that are pure as gold. And let's sing shackled by a heavy burden. Neath the load of care, guilt and shame, and then the hand of Jesus touched me. And uh, now I'm no longer the same. He touches you, you're no longer the same. Shackled by a heavy burden, neath the load of guilt and shame. And the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now, oh, he touched me and made. I know that second verse. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And know the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me, and he made me whole. Amen. He touched me, 
and made me whole. Praise God, I'm whole tonight. You can be whole tonight when Jesus touches you and you get touched by the blessed Spirit of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Brother Gene, y'all come on and, and sing one for us tonight uh, before the message. Anybody got a word of testimony you'd like to stand and give tonight? Any words on anybody's heart? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Amen. Well, how many are glad that uh, you're saved? Raise your right hand. You glad you're saved? Raise your right hand. Okay, you know you're saved. Raise your left hand. Okay, if you're happy about it, just wave. Amen. All right. That's our wave offering for tonight. That's our wave offering. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm going to give my testimony song tonight. So, uh, called Now I Know There's No Hillbilly Heaven. And uh, I'll go back a little bit like that. My wife and I met at a little holiness church. We both got saved there. And Brother Rick, she was a lady pastor. I know that's hard for Baptists, but seriously, she was the nicest woman I've ever met in my life. She said that you don't take advantage of a girl, you the girl, and when you take her, she's to be your wife. And I was married to Norma Jean for 56 years. But like a lot of us, got out of church, and we wanted to start a band. I played electric guitar, lead guitar. I had a friend of mine who'd play the rhythm guitar, Norma could play and sing. I had a friend of mine that played the steel guitar and the bass guitar, all we needed, and we hired one. So we got playing, played in a lot of the nightclubs, the bar rooms, and the places where we thought we was having fun, but it wasn't after we found out to rededicate our life. But anyway, her and Bob could sing six hours and never used words by heart because it was always real dim and, and dark in there. Uh, we played some of the biggest carnivals uh, in Rockville, Maryland, as big as most state fires. We went down and made a long play album. They played it on the radio for one year, and we got a lot of calls for that. Then we went down and made another recording to sell our records. They didn't have CDs then. The next year, we went down and, and made it. And we was playing so much. We dressed nice and tried to always look good. But uh, we start playing out of the state, and we ended up buying a bus. And we was making lots of money. We was coming to Florida to see some friends of ours, and they invited us to Tabernacle Baptist Church. I had never been at a Baptist church, so I didn't know what to think, and I really didn't want to go. But Norma said we should go. We're staying with our friends. So we went, and most of you know where that is, out by McDonald's. The church was packed, the car room was packed, it was hardly a place, on, and I know Debbie knows Brother Cothran. They start off real slow, Rick, and uh, you would enjoy that. It's one of the old time preachers. He preached that morning on hell. That really, <laughs> that really got our attention. We rededicated our life and never played country music again for money. I went back and sold the bus to my friend. I still play country music because it's it's for fun, it is true stuff that happens. But anyway, uh, we became real good friends with the Cothrans, and when he retired and uh, started uh, doing evangelist work, Norm and I would go and sing for him. And before that, I was ordained a deacon in 1994, at the same time Steve was, and Steve and Shirley's been dear friends of ours ever since. But anyway, I wanted him to preach the charge for me, and he did. We became good friends. He came to West Virginia. Him and Avison stayed a week with us and preached at Russell's uh, church. And we'd done all the New England states together. And uh, it was 9-11, a year later. We got up, we all had our flags, and we all had a prayer, never dreaming that we'd never get to do that again. When uh, I lost Norma, I just really wanted to die. I prayed every day. I would never wake up. And when it's your lowest point in your life, God will send someone there for you. Brother Tommy knew that when we at Sunday school, he prayed for her a lot. And we went there. I'm trying to 
tell all the stories. She said, Gene, that's the nicest man I've ever met in my life. And you all was there for us all the time, Tommy, and I appreciate that. But uh, in 2011, I was ordained into the ministry that I can marry someone or uh, do a funeral. But at the lowest point in your life, God will some send someone there for you, and he sent me Abbas. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God sent her to me in my life, and uh, she is probably the woman that I've ever met in my life, and I'm sure most of you know, know how she is. She's just a very nice, easygoing person, just and has uh, a lot to do for others and always thinking about others and always calling them and encouraging them when they're down. And uh, she's been a, I started to give up my music. I had stuff, I, I have all kinds of music equipment still to this day. I have all them records in my music room and I started to give it up. She said, Gene, Norma would never want you to give up your music. So I got excited, Brother Rick, and went down and bought me a new Martin guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have that in my music room. So I'm gonna try to do this song for you. So maps I've tried to get my life together. But those old sad countries wouldn't let me be. Then Jesus heard my heart crying. He said, son, there's no need trying. Just bring your old guitar and follow me. It's awful hard to pray on a dance floor. You can't keep your eyes on Calvary Looking through a bottle of wine You'll drift a little further away Every time the jukebox plays And there'll be no altar call at any time Now I know there's no hillbilly heaven there's no honky-tonk angels around God's throne. You can't sing his praise on Sunday and sing the blues all night long. When Jesus changed my life, he changed my song. Yes, when Jesus changed my life, he really changed my Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say one more thing. When uh, we rededicated our life, we had the opportunity to sing in seven, six churches. Norma got to sing on the Dr. Charles Stanley Cruise, and we answered the phones for the Billy Graham Crusade. So God has really us. And uh, I had talked to Rick maybe a year or two ago about this church here. All my friends was here, and I wanted to make sure, so when I made the choice to come here, I knew I was at home. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, that's good. Praise God. He puts a new song in our uh, mouth, even... Praise unto our God, many shall see it, and trust in the Lord. Psalm 40 says that, when God does give us a new song. And there we have a good testimony about that tonight. Now, would you take the word of God and again go back with me tonight to Isaiah chapter 40. I want to continue about this theme of the greatness of God. I only uh, got one point in today about the greatness of God. I said that God is greater than our sins. He's greater than our sins. This message was given to a remnant that had been down in Babylon in captivity. And now they're going home. And... Uh, God reminds them in the first 11 verses that we've looked at that he has forgiven them, pardoned them, 
of all their sin. Now that's a blessing tonight. Only a great God can do that. And I remind you that the doctrine of the remnant is given to us in the Word of God. You say, now preacher, what do you mean by the doctrine of the remnant? Go back on if you would and keep your finger here at chapter 40. And go back to chapter 1 and look what Isaiah says about he hauls them into court and he issues a judgment against the nation. He says in verse 2, Hear, O heavens, give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. There's the indictment coming. The ox knoweth his owner, and he asks his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Well, you ever heard of an old dumb ox and an old dumb donkey? They know their master's crib, but Israel did not know. Israel, Israel did not know their master. He says in verse 4, All sinful nation of people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. You've got children that are corruptors. And we see that in this hour. Children that are corruptors, they have no influence in the home, have no fatherly guidance, many of them. That's sad. So they need some leadership. But in Israel's day, they had children that were rebellious against their families, and loved ones. They have forsaken the Lord, he says. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They're gone away backward. Could you be stricken anymore? He said, you're going to keep revolting more and more, verse 5. The whole head is sick. The leadership, the ruling class is sick. The upper echelon, the White House, say in that hour. The leadership is sick. And the whole heart becomes faint. Because the leadership, he says, from the sole of the foot even down to the, unto the head, there's no soundness. Wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they've not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. You need some ointment in there. He says, verse 7, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. I began to think about our own country. Our city, your cities are burned with fire. Your land, scour it in your presence. Hello. We got a lot of strangers in this land that are devouring our land in our presence. And it becomes desolate. As overthrown by strangers, the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, and except the Lord of hosts. Now here comes the remnant. God has a, God has a few, just a remnant. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, a holy band, just a little piece that's torn off, a remnant. A very small remnant done that, we would have been like Sodom. And we would have been like unto Gomorrah. So he said, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Saith the Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs, or of, when you do come uh, to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Don't bring no more obl oblations, verse 13. Incense is abomination to me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with its iniquity, even unto the solemn meeting, your new moon and your appointed feast, my soul hateth. 
They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. I am sick of your religious pretense. I'm up to here with your religion. I believe God's saying that the same thing tonight to us. Sick of religion. Religion, man's attempt to appease holy God. Man's attempt to gain the merit of God through tradition, through works, to try to be good enough. You see, God says away with it. I'm sick of it. Our forms and our, our, our rules and our rituals in our churches. God is looking for something uh, that, is, that is fresh, something that's new, something uh, that is real and sincere. God wants sincerity today. God wants sincerity. God wants sincerity in the classroom. All over the church, God wants people just to be sincere. Paul said, I'm praying for the church that, that Philippi down yonder, that they'll be sincere and without all offense unto the day of Jesus Christ. Sincere. It comes from the old Greek word sinceri, which means they would they they would break, they would draw artery, and they would uh, put wax in it uh, to make sure it would hold back together. And when they would go to the market and buy a piece of pottery, they would hold it up to the light to see if that old feller had dropped it and put some wax in it. You know, they would put that pot up to the to the light. It did not have uh, uh, wax in it. He would say, it is sincerely, without flaw. God is looking for us in the church to be sincere tonight. He's tired of religious pretense. He says in verse 15, when you spread forth your hands, I'll hide mine eyes from you. When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. So what do we do? He says, in verse 16, you need to wash you, make you clean, put away the evil you're doing from, if you cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, uh, judge the fatherless, and plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, uh, though they be red like crimson, they shall be full. Cool. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And how is this faithful city, verse 21, become a harlot? But yet in the midst of this, there is a remnant. There's a remnant. They tell me that that Greek for remnant means seed. A seed. And he says, if the Lord here hath not left to us a little seed, just a little band of faithful followers, we would have been devastated. We would have been annihilated like Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, fellas, folks, listen. The doctrine of the remnant is seen all through this Bible. God has an elect. God has a few out of the many. There is an elect in the Old Testament. There is the elect. Israel is God's elect. He's got a few, all vast hundreds of thousands of people that still love him, that still worship him. Elijah got discouraged and got under the juniper tree. What did Elijah say? Lord, Jezebel's on my trail and I'm about ready to go. Go ahead and take my life. I'm the only one standing. God said, hey, wait a minute, bud. They 7,000. <laughs> they still 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to Baal. What encouragement that might have been to Elijah. 7,000 that have not turned over and, and uh, bowed their knee to Baal. The true to Jehovah. They still love God. They still love the law of God. 1,000 still out yonder. And I say to you tonight, brother... Though uh, we might be few out of the many, there's still a lot of us out there, praise God, that still like, love God and still like old-time religion. Amen. We still love the book. We still love the blood. We still believe in the blessed hope 
and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so in these verses of Scripture, uh, we, we find that God has a, a few uh, that will remain uh, faithful to Him. Now when we come down to the end of this age, the consummation of this age in the program of God, there's still going to be a faithful remnant. God will still have his people. There'll still be the thousands that have not bowed the knee to the God of this world. At the closing days of the tribulation hour, my Bible says, and Jesus stated it in Matthew 24 and verse 22, and except those days shouldn't, there should no flesh be saved. It's going to be so bad that if in those days... No flesh is going to be saved. You say, Brother Rick, do you believe people's going to be saved during the tribulation? Yes. The gospel is going to be preached during the tribulation period. God is going to seal 144,000 Jewish evangelists. They're going to go out and preach the word of God. God is going to have his faithful witnesses. There's going to be a grand, uh, great harvest of souls that's going to be saved during the tribulation. They'll give their heart to Christ. Many of them, of course, will pay uh, for their allegiance to Christ by martyrdom. But Jesus said, listen, except I shorten those days, no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake. Those days shall be shortened. Elect, a remnant, a few of many. Then we come down to the book of Revelation, we find the few of many. There are thousands and ten thousands of thousands the Bible says yonder in Revelation they'll be singing worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain. They'll be praising God. There's a remnant. Now folks, in this hour there's a remnant. There's a church of the living God. We're the remnant of God. We're a few of many. In Acts 15, uh, somewhere there, I believe one of the James, I believe said this, that God what God is doing out of this old world a people for his name God's calling up for his name and my friend let me say to you tonight we're the called of God the church is called out we're called to go forth and one day we're going to get called up amen we're the remnant of God now when we think about Isaiah and his prophet this remnant now it's time to go home he says, you've been down here long enough. You put your harps on the willow tree. You need to take those harps down and go home and start getting back in that choir and start singing the praises of God again like you used to. Because how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You just can't sing God's song when you're backslidden. You don't have a song. The song is muffled. The song is dead. You've got to resurrect that song. You've got to get right with God. You've got to lay your all on the altar of God before you, that song begins. We've all know been there. You can't really sing. You don't have joy when you're not right with God, when you're not in tune with God. And we lay our harps on the willows and we no longer, we no longer uh, pluck those uh, strings and we no longer sing. And the enemy comes along and taunts us and sing and says, why don't you sing one of those songs, the Lord's songs, like you used to sing? And they said, how can we? Strange land. The most miserable person in this world is not a... a the most miserable person in this world is a saved person out of the will of God. It's a saved person that's not right with God. We become miserable. Now, we need to understand, brother, that in these verses of Scripture, it's greater than our sins. He's a pardoning God. We talked about that this morning. He's a pardoning God. It's a pardon. Thank God. He says, comfort ye, comfort ye my people in chapter 40. Bring comfort to them. There's comfort tonight in knowing that God forgives us and watches us uh, from our sins. And then there's the voice of preparation. 
He, uh, here's, the, here's the voice of John the Baptist, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. I'm going to prepare a way for you so you can go back home. Amen. I tell you, God has prepared a way for you to come back tonight. Amen. He's left the signpost up. He's left the ancient landmarks up. And you can always find your way home like the prodigal son did as he journeyed up that old country road. And there was daddy there to meet him, praise God. And out and fell on his neck and kissed him. God always has a way back. Why is that, Brother Rick? Because my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. So there's a voice of preparation. There's a voice of promise. We talked about that, verse 6. He said, what shall I cry? He said, you better cry that all flesh is like grass. And all the goodliness thereof is like the flower of the field. The grass will wither, the flower will fade because the Spirit of the upon it Surely the people are grass. The grass is going to wither the flower. We don't have much time left, he says. Life is brief. Life is uncertain. Life is short. And then he talks about the voice of pity, verse 9 and 10. We talked about that this morning. The good news, he says, don't be afraid. Don't let fear keep you back. Go on back home, he says. Here's a remnant now. They're on their way back home. And the voice of God comes. Our great God comes. And we need to learn that he's greater than any sin that we'd ever commit. Number two, God is greater than our circumstances. God is greater than our circumstances. Now, God is saying here, go back home. Go back home. Look at, well, look at verse 12. Here's God, now he's feeding his flock like a shepherd. I'm glad I know that kind of God. I'm glad I know that kind of, I'm glad I know the God of verse 10. He's a sovereign God. The Lord God will come with a strong hand. I know the God of judgment. He's coming one day to judge. He's going to judge the wicked. And all nations that forget him will be turned into hell, the Bible says. And then, thank God, he comes, and brother, he's going to feed his flock like a shepherd. He's a gentle shepherd. You say, what, what does that mean? Well, when Jesus comes, he's going to rule and reign in Jerusalem, and during a thousand years, brother, he's going to feed his flock like a shepherd. He's going to take care of us. We're going to rule and reign with him. He'll gather the lambs, verse 11, with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead them that are with young, but notice verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hall of his hand? Have you ever thought about God measuring waters in the hollow? That's a big hand, brother. Listen, uh, they, they were saying, listen, our little ones ain't going to make it. Our little children, God, the enemy's out there, God. Look at those massive walls of Babylon, Lord. See those gigantic mountains. What's happened? They got so wrapped up in their circumstances that they failed to see God and how great he is. Our problem is that we put our eyes upon our circumstances. We see the mask that the devil puts up. We see our anemic ways and how frail we are and how impotent we are we're weak people we're infirmed and we say lord we just can't make it we can't go we're like those spies in numbers 14 amen 12 spies 10 came back and said we can't do it two came back and said let's go over well there's giants over there oh listen but there's also god god's over there amen and there's grapes over there amen and Joshua and Caleb said, we are well able to take it. We need to do it. And because they wouldn't listen to minority report, they wandered 38-some years in the wilderness. And all of them died off from 20 years of age up. And a new generation, the little children had to grow up and take the place of mom and daddy, Adish Bardia, and they walked into the promised land eventually. 
Now, God is saying this in here. Look, I'm a great God. I hold, I measure the waters in the palm. Now, somewhere I read this. There are 326 uh, million cubic miles of water on planet Earth. I don't know if that's the right estimate, but I read that. I believe it. Amen. It's probably more than that. 70% of earth is full of water. And God has 326 million cubic miles of water in the palm of his hand. Our God's great. Our God's big. So he measures the waters, the Bible says, in the hall of his hand and meets out the heavens with the span and comprehends the dust of the earth in a measure and weighs the mountain in scales and the hills in a balance. That the anemic God that the liberals purport tonight. That don't look like the anemic God that the infidels uh, uh, want us to believe in. We have, a, we have a mighty God. We have a great God tonight. He says, look, he says, you think you're smarter than God? You've got another thing coming, he, he said. Because he says in verse 13, who's directed the spirit of the Lord? Who's, who's been his counselor? Who's taught God? With whom? With who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and uh, taught him knowledge and showed uh, uh, to him the way of understanding? The nations are just like a drop in a bucket here. We're all the mighty nations. That, where is Babylon? It's gone. Devastated. Where is Egypt? Well, Egypt is not powerful like it used to be. Rome is not powerful like it used to be. All the nations that forget God have been turned into hell. So God's not worried about this old world situation and the circumstances. He says, look up to the heavens. He says, God, I am enthroned in the heavens. I hold the water in the hollow of my hand and I meet out the stars and the constellations uh, just like that. I measure them out and I weigh them the mountains and the scales, he's big. And we wonder if he could supply our needs. We wonder if he's going to meet our needs. Sure, he's going to meet our needs. Because he's the ruler of all rulers. He's the king of all kings. Brother, he's the lord of all lords tonight. He's enthroned. He put all the stars in place. And besides that, he named every one of them. He named every one of them. I like Psalm 147, verse 3 and 4. This same God does this, folks. He healeth the brokenhearted and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. That's our God. So God is saying, listen, I'm the God who pardons you from your sins. I'm a great God. I'm a God. And then God is greater than our situations and circumstances. in life. And then God is greater than our little feelings. Our little feelings. We've seen a lot of that lady, uh, lately, little feelings on our shoulders. We get hurt. We go around looking for somebody to knock our feelings off so we can get hurt God is greater we saw that this past week when Drew Brees said what he said and some of his players react crying he hurt their feelings he hurt their feelings problem is he backtracked still we need to pray for him we need to pray for all these football players that uh, claim to be Christians that they'll stand for the Lord God is greater than our feelings. He says, listen, verse tw uh, Jacob is saying, verse 27, Why are you saying, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, my judgment is passed over my God, over, for, over from my God. Oh, Lord, my feelings are hurt. My, I, it, it's no use. It's no use going on. He says, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, 
he does not faint, neither is he weary. There is no searching out of his understanding because he gives power to the faint. You think your feelings are bad now, he gives power to the faint. You don't have to have your feelings hurt. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. So here's where the rub comes in. Here is where we have to bow in shame. Oh, God, you found me out. You have found me out. You know, more Christians tonight live by their feelings than we do by faith. We live by our feelings. That's the reason why we just seem like can't cross the finish line. Because we live by our feelings rather than our faith in God. Isaiah talks about their feelings here. God says, listen, don't you know? You're saying that I don't, you, I don't care about you? Listen, you find a Christian that starts talking like this the way they're talking here, then that fella is a candidate for trouble. But know about me no more. God doesn't care about me no more. I feel so rejected. I feel so weak not known have you not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is ever weary there's understanding now can you imagine here's this small group they're heading back this remnant that's been down in Babylon for all the years they're facing the long journey back home and they look at one another and they'll say we'll how many's ever said that? We'll never make it. I don't just think we're going to make it. How many's, how many, you don't have to answer this. This is a rhetorical question. I wonder how many's ever said, you know, I don't think Jesus is ever going to come. You've heard it all your life. You've preached it for years. You've heard your preacher preach it. The evangelist preach it. Jesus is come. I started hearing that, ma that message uh, preached back in the early 70s I thought listen they preached it to, so ardently that I thought sure coming and I said Lord don't come till I get out of high school please I won't at least graduate and then I said Lord don't come so I can go to Bible college even though I was preaching it Lord don't come because I want a church somewhere I want a wife <laughs> amen And you're always saying, Lord, uh, when are you really coming? I don't sing that little song, way a little longer, dear Jesus. So many souls are lost in sin. Uh, I don't sing that. That's part of the reason why he hasn't come, because he is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But I just wonder how many times we sit back and say, Lord, I just don't know. I don't know if he's, is he going to come or not. Well, I'm going to tell you when he's going to come. Here it is. In the hour that you think not, Jesus said the Son of Man is coming. <laughs> In the hour that you least expect me, the Son of Man is going to come. Oh, the road's too long. The mountains are too big. The giants is going to eat us up in this old world. They'll see the old imp marching on the street. This Antifa crowd. All this other crowd. Lord, we're afraid of them. They're going to overrun us. They're going to take over America. We're, are we really going to make it? Jesus, are you really going to come back? And so he says this to them. i tell you what you need to do. The spirit of getting over your feelings... The secret of getting over your resentment poisons up us deep down inside and zaps our strength and makes us impatient and indignant. The secret is this. Wait on the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. That's what he said. He gives power, verse 29, to the faint. To them that have no might, he increased strength. Boy, I need that. Even the youth shall faint and be women shall utterly fail. The young men are going to fail. Our youth, 
tonight are fainting. Our young people are fainting. And they're weary. But they that wait, be still and I am God. But they that wait upon the Lord, what will they do? They'll renew their, they'll exchange their strength, their so-called strength, which is really weakness, and they'll get the strength of God. They'll start mounting up wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And here it is, they'll walk right on through and not faint. Walking that highway. Here goes, here goes the remnant walking that highway. Why? Because God said wait. Wait. Inch by inch. What a cinch. <laughs> and so a believing Christian is not one who does great things, but one who does little things in a great way. We step by step. We don't all mount up with wings and fly over our situations and circumstances. It's a day-by-thing day, a day-by-thing walk. So he says, trust me, for I will pardon you. Look to me, I'm greater than your circumstances. Wait, I'm greater than your feelings. This great, this great God came down one day in the form of a little baby. And there yonder in the manger in Bethlehem of Judea, there is a little baby laying there. And that was God, the creator, the one who faints not and never fails. Neither is weary and there is no searching of his under. That's God there. And he came down for us. Hallelujah. And he walked through in Jesus. He walked in Jesus. In Christ tabernacled the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yes. And he went to the cross and he died for our sins. He was buried and he arose again the third day. And before he went back to glory, he said, I will come again as you see me go away. I'm going to tell you tonight, folks, just keep waiting. Wait on the Lord. Renew your strength tonight. Mount up with those wings like eagles. You know, there, there's, there's gears, there's grace for every gear of life. There's gears for those who mount up with wings as eagles. There's gear, a gear, a grace for those who will run and not be weary. And there's a grace that is available for those who walk and not faint. Grace for every gear of life that you go through. Praise God tonight. God is greater. Get a grip on the greatness of God tonight. If I, if, I, if I know of anything that's going to help us through all this mess, it's look up, look unto him. Look unto God. He's great. He's going to take care of us. He's going to see us through. And one shall sound and time shall be no more. Jesus will come back in the morning. Because it's night time now. The night is just about far spent. The day is at hand. And the Lord is coming back in the morning. So tomorrow might be morning when Jesus comes. I hope we're all ready. Let's get ready tonight. Let's get prayed up, packed up, and ready to go up. Amen? <laughs> I used to have a, a preacher friend. He's now in heaven. He used to say, well, I'll tell you what we just need to do. You just need to shout it out on here on out. Shout it out. He saw how bad it was getting. Because he had been down the road many years. He said, we just want to shout it out from here on out. And we ought to. Shout praises to God and try to get, take as many people as we can with us. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray together tonight. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this privilege that we have to be here in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, as we think about these verses. As we think about you've got a remnant of people tonight that are ready. Just like you've got a remnant of people in this country that love America. They will stand up and fight for America. They'll fight for the flag. There's a remnant of soldiers tonight in God's army. Lord, we're ready to march. We're ready to do your will. And we're ready to go when you help us tonight. In Jesus' name, and all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand, everybody.
and let's sing a song. Hymn number 321. 321. Let him in. Praise God. And he's knocking on the church door. Let me in. Let me in. And church, let's let him in. Amen. Let's let Jesus have his way here in this church. Not my will, but his will done. Now, I don't know. The next time we meet, we all might be in heaven. Amen. That is, if you know Jesus, we all might. And uh, the Lord could come. And uh, we never know, do we? So let's do what we can. Be nice, be kind, give, give out the love of Jesus. Praise God. Thank y'all for coming tonight. Lord, bless us. Watch over us, dear Lord. Give us traveling mercies home. Bring, a back, uh, back, uh, bring us back again Wednesday night for Bible study, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. <laughs>